there is three things certain in life, paying taxes, paying rent, and me being the most charismatic man. Welcome to the most overrated, underappreciated, most viewed on view podcast of all time. Welcome to, to, to the Prince of Fresh Air. I'm, of course, your host, the beloved, the most electric fireman entertainment. Beat that Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I'm just kidding. But, you know, thank you for another episode. We are back. Uh, you know, I'm doing a solo this week, but next episode, I have a special guest. Can't wait for that. It's going to be a very interesting conversation with this uh, amazing woman, very talented. But before I get into the episode, you know, someone stopped me uh, earlier today and they said, hey, Percy, who is your favorite athlete of all time? And I got to thinking and they love this answer. And I said, you know, my favorite athlete of all time, if you didn't know, is myself. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let me break it down to you. If I was to face LeBron James in basketball, I will cross his ankles. If I was to, you know, do a three-point contest with Steph Curry, I would beat him without even shooting a, a, a ball. If I was to go up against Cristiano Ronaldo in soccer, he'd tap out before I even scored a goal. If I was to face Michael Phelps in a in a race, well, he'd just give me his championship medals and call me Aquaman. If I was to step in the ring with Mike Tyson, I would knock him out before he even steps in the ring. If I was to go against Simone Biles, I'll, I'll flip her and take her medals. I'm just that good. If I was to, I don't know, go against John Jones, I would submit him before he even looks at me. I'm just that good. I'm the most charismatic man. If Tiger Woods went up against me, well, that goes without saying. I still win, and I even have to play. I'm just kidding. I'm just trolling. John Jones, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But, you know, on a serious note, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the biggest troll in the world. That's what I do. But on a serious note, I do want to give a quick um, shout out and uh, condolences to uh, Florida. Uh, Hurricane Milton, um, as the time of this recording, has hit Florida. And, you know, a lot of people are suffering tragedies. Um, many people lost their lives, lost their homes, uh, you know, lost their livelihood. And it's such a, a heartbreaking uh, thing. And I just hope that uh, people are able to, you know, recover through this hardship. Um, and our government does their best to kind of help all of these people, North Carolina, Florida, all of those uh, states have been hit and affected by hurricanes over the last month, um, that people are able to bounce back. And especially with inflation, it is horrible right now. I mean, the fact that a bag of cereal costs $8 is egregious, egregious. You know, my thoughts and prayers go out to Florida and all those affected other uh, states. And, and, you know, I wish them well and recovering and bouncing back from such a horrible crisis. Now, one thing I want to say before I even get into this episode is I'm going to call out somebody, and it's not Dwayne Rock Johnson. I, I think I call him out enough. I got to call out these airlines for, for price gouging and taking advantage of the situation because, as we all know, a lot of people are being affected in these type of situations with the hurricane, and the airlines thought for some reason, hey, why not make as much money as possible? So, you know, airline tickets from Florida to wherever people are trying to leave and go to, you know, they went from an average of $200, $300 to $1,500. Egregious, egregious. So, you know, I, I, I'm glad that, you know, politicians called them out on it and stopped them from, you know, taking advantage of vulnerable people at such a, a horrible time. It is it's such a shame. But, Let's let's get back to the entertainment. Let's get back to the quality. I don't want to make this too somber, but you know, I just had to get that off because I, I I do hope that people who go through situations like that, even though I've never personally been affected ever in that type of situation, um, you know, I hope they're able to bounce back and, and recover from such a uh, tremendous situation. Um, I want to talk about something that's been prevalent in sports lately, um, and there's two parts of this. Is judging, and it's also the the refs. I want to talk about the refs first because this is something that just happened recently at UFC 307. So there's a ref um, who got criticized by everybody, uh, fighters, uh, UFC personnel, media members. They got crucified. And you might be wondering, what am I talking about? So this ref, um, Dave Seljustek. I probably botched his name. He was refereeing a fight between Cesar Almeida and Ihor Poterio. And he was criticized because the man has just completely dissociated himself in that fight. 
Now, when you're a ref in any sport, basketball, soccer, UFC, boxing, uh, tennis, the Olympics, your job is to protect the and, and withheld and, and um, keep the standard of play even and make sure everything goes smoothly and accordingly. This ref just kind of was just like, I'm at the beach. His vibe was, I'm just here to get a paycheck and that's it. You know, Ihor Poteria, uh, unfortunately, suffered uh, some egregious fouls. And this is no slight in Caesar. You know, obviously, when you're, you know, you're fighting or doing your sport, sometimes fouls happen. So he suffers two eye pokes in the span of 10 seconds. The ref barely stopped those. He didn't even acknowledge it. And the only time he actually acknowledged it was when Ihor turned away and Caesar let him take a break. Because most athletes, you know, when in that type of situation, they're going to go for you. You know, you're, you're not defending yourself. What they always say in boxing, defend yourself at all times, protect yourself at all times. He didn't at that situation because he got eye poked. And this ref just didn't give him any time to recover. Um, normally in those situations, if you're not familiar, at least in the, the combat sports space, is when there's a foul like that, you get five minutes to kind of, you know, address the situation, take a break, make sure that you recover nicely. This ref didn't do none of that. It, it was like it was the first time for him back to school. Like he's never done this before. A professional ref at the highest organization in MMA, and you're acting like that? Egregious, egregious. And then so after two eye pokes, then Ehor unfortunately, takes another foul. He takes a, a nut shot. Again, the ref didn't do anything, no point deduction, no warning, no nothing. And, you know, fortunately, Dana White, the president of the UFC, took matters into his own hands and was like, this is the last fight he's reffing tonight. And they pulled him from the rest of the card. And I'm sure he's getting a stern talking to by the commission. Now, I mention this because in other sports when this happened, you know, NBA, NFL, NHL, when refs make such egregious and bad calls, they take swift action. They get them out of there. There's no excuses to be made. There's no cover up. Get them out of there. And especially when you're talking about NBA, NFL, when you're talking about the highest paid athletes, some of the most highest paid athletes of all time uh, competing in these sports, you know, LeBron James ain't going to take that type of, you know, uh, rep, bad roughing. He's not going to take that behavior. And so he will speak up. His team will speak up. His managers will speak up. Anybody in NBA will speak up about it and get that ref banned and removed from officiating that, that, um, that a game. And it just seems that, unfortunately, when it comes to combat sports, a lot of these organizations like UFC, uh, Zoo for Boxing, uh, at least in the UFC, I will speak in the UFC terms, um, they have a governing body outside of the UFC. So these refs aren't strictly ref by the UFC. They're not, you know, uh, part of the UFC organization. They're part from another commission. So when these refs do egregious behavior like that, they get away with it because the UFC can't reprimand them. It's up to the commission. And the commission are the ones that have to address the situation. And rarely you ever see this happen. And that is one of the biggest problems I, I see with sports right now is the fact that these refs have no accountability. You know, in any other sport, when a ref or a player or a media member uh, of any sort make a mistake, they have to come out and address it. They have to, you know, give this out of the story, apologize or whatever the case may be. But you have to hear from them. In a situation like that, you don't, the, the, the fighters can't, conf you know, confront the ref. Uh, the ref don't face media scrutiny from the media. They they don't get a camera uh, and, and a microphone to talk about these situations. They go to the back to their own separate uh, entity, and they got to deal with that behind closed doors. And I think going forward, that has to change because you're ruining fights and fighters who should have won a fight or an athlete who's who or a team who's competing that night ends up in that type of situation and impacts the outcome of the fight and or the or the or the game or the sport. And that might not be in their favor. And so it's not right to either party of uh, the sport and the two athletes and the two teams who are playing to have to uh, 
go with that type of egregious behavior. Something needs to change. And I think the biggest problem right now is there's no accountability and no way for fighters and, you know, these athletes to address these type of rests because it has to happen. And this goes ties into uh, bad judging. Howie Booth is a prime example. Howie Booth at UFC Paris uh, in September. He was a judge um, based out of Australia. This is where the UFC had uh, UFC Perth, Australia. And um, Howie Booth was uh, roughing a fight between two uh, big name heavyweights, Ty Tuivasa and um, well, Ty Bam Bam Tuivasa. Let me say that right. I want him coming after me. Ty Ty, Ty Bam Bam Tuivasa and Jarzinho Biggie Boy Rosenstrike. And it was clear watching that fight. Jarzinho won. Everybody had that. Even Tai Tuivasa's grandmother knew that Jarzinho won. But for some reason, you know, when we're talking about hometown bias, you know, people don't like to admit that this happens, but it does because when you're repping a certain city or a certain area, you know, people might uh, be, um, you know, swayed by that favoritism. And so Tai Tuivasa was representing that part of the world. And the, the judge, Howie Booth, scored the fight for Tai Tuivasa, that he won all rounds, he won every exchange, and he was the clear-cut winner. And that scorecard was so egregious that everybody, even the commentators, uh, Michael Bisping, Daniel Cormier, uh, uh, Joe Rogan, who, by the way, I'm coming after for the best podcast in the world, I'm coming for you. But anyway, that, we're going to say that for another time. But even they, in the middle of this big event, took to Twitter to talk about this. And again, no accountability because these judges are, again, are not uh, represented by the UFC. They're represented by a governing body. So what happens when these judges make such bad, egregious calls, there's no accountability. You, A fighter can't talk to them. Uh, the UFC can't reprimand them. They go to their own separate you know, entity and they get you know addressed behind closed doors. And again, this goes to what I was talking about earlier. Refs and judges, when they make bad calls, they need to be called out. In certain sports like NBA, NFL, they do take that initiative to get these refs to talk about these bad, uh, you know, bad judgment calls. And look, it's human nature. Every human is going to make a mistake. I, I understand. I don't care how long of a professional you've been in a sport, whether you're a ref or athlete, we all make mistakes. That's not saying that uh, mistakes can't happen. But when mistakes do happen, you have to address it. And you, you you think if LeBron did something stupid that people would not be shoving a camera and mic in his face, asking for comment? Why are these refs not being held accountable? And this is so egregious because outside of NBA, the team sports, when you're talking about an individualistic sport, like uh, you know a gymnastics, a UFC, combat sports, not only does this impact the record of the fighter, but it impacts their financial as well. Because a lot of these fighters, they get paid to win as well. They don't just get paid to show up. They get paid to win. So if a fighter, let's say, he's guaranteed 75000 to show up, 75000 extra if he wins, one hundred fifty grand total. If a fighter goes out there and he gets robbed by a ref, or a ref is not calling out fouls that this athlete has been taking, instead of winning his full purse, $150,000, he's only going to get $75,000. And that's not right because a lot of these athletes, they put their bodies, their health, um, their mental health, their physical health on the line for us, for our entertainment. And there needs to be uh, accountability because it's not right that athletes are losing money, losing uh you know, getting uh, losses uh, on their record and even long-term health. How many times we've seen in the NBA uh, athletes throwing elbows back in the day? Now, this is a little bit before my time, but back then when Shaq and, you know, all, all the big heavy hitters were playing back then, it was very physical. How many times did we see a Kobe get an elbow to the nose or another uh, basketball player, you know, get egregious fouls? And, you know, these type of fouls can impact someone's health going forward. So if you get eye poked in the middle of a fight and the ref don't stop it, this happened actually, I'll bring this up. This happened recently with Justin Gaethje. Um, and 
He was uh, Mike Beltron. Everybody knows Mike Beltron with the big uh, beard, long braided beard. Amazing ref. This is no slight against them. But when uh, Justin Gaethje fought Michael Chandler, um, Michael Chandler poked Justin Gaethje in the eye in the end of round two. And Mike Beltron didn't catch it. And Justin Gaethje turns around because I got poked in the eye. I can't see. And Michael Chandler goes punch him in the face with a right hook. Now, luckily, Justin Gaethje was able to withstand that. But what if Michael Chandler knocked him out? Mike Beltran would have waved the fight off. The only way that knockout would have came was because of the foul. So in that situation, should Justin Gaethje have to suffer not only financial loss and physical loss, but also a loss in his record as well? And again, one of the problems with this is that when these refs and judges make their ruling, you can't go against them. You can't file an appeal. And every time we've seen this in combat sports, it never works in the athlete's favor, unfortunately. And the only way I usually see this is if the ref or the judge makes such an egregious uh, mistake that it, it just it, it has to be addressed. When there's no room to wiggle, that's when you see those type of judges get reprimanded and maybe decisions overturned. But if that doesn't happen, the athlete has to suffer the consequences. And that's not right because, like I said, you know, you get eye poked. What if your eye gets, you know, gouged to the point where you can't, you know, you got to go to the hospital immediately and your eye is falling out? Or, you know, a foul gets taken place and you get hit in your lower extremities and now you can't continue. But the ref doesn't stop the fight. He doesn't give you time to process it. So what happens? You stop to address the situation and then the, the, the opponent capitalizes on you and you end up losing. And this is no way, shape, or form demonizing the other team or the opponent. You are paid to what you, you know, what you got to do. And they always say protect yourself at all times. So I can't get mad at an athlete when he sees his opposition in a state of uh of less than. And so if you could capitalize on that and take the win or win the game, you're going to take it. And so it's not up to them to stop the fight. It's up to the refs, the judges to acknowledge this and take matters into their own hands. But as we've seen lately, this has been such a big topic, but there's no recourse because, again, there's no accountability. And until these big organizations start going uh, and, 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 and building a foundation with the, the athletic commissions of the people who oversee the refs and the judges, nothing's going to change. It's going to continue to see bad calls, bad stoppages, bad judging scorecards, and you're going to see a lot of fighters pissed off and upset because, again, you got a loss on your record, you lost some money, and you took the loss. It doesn't matter how egregious or how the fans feel or the media feels, a loss on your record is a loss on your record. And so, you know, it, it's a big conversation going forward about that because, you know, like I said, th th there's some big ram ramifications for that. Another thing I want to talk about, Alex Pereira, Poetan, uh, Chama. That's right. I'm saying Chama. I am a Chama believer. So if you don't know who Alex Pereira is, he is a former two-time glory middleweight champion, uh, also glory um, light heavyweight champion. Currently, he is a former uh, UFC middleweight champion and uh, defending, reigning, defending light heavyweight champion uh, of the lightweight, the uh, light heavyweight division in the UFC. He just beat Khalil Roundtree and uh, UFC 307 main event by knockout round four. And this started a conversation about undeserved title shots. And people called out the UFC for making um, Alex Pereira and Khalil Roundtree because Khalil Roundtree is uh, ranked number eight in the light, heavy, light heavyweight rankings. And people said, hey, why is he getting the title shot when you have someone like Magomed and Goliath who's going against Alexander Rakic uh, coming up soon? Why is Magomed and Goliath the guy that everybody's been clamoring for uh, Alex Pereira to fight? Why is he not fighting him but number eight ranked uh, Khalil Roundtree is fighting him. And one of the biggest storylines going into this fight was, you know, Khalil Roundtree was coming off suspension, no fault of his own, but he took the consequences of what happened 
uh, failing the drug test, and uh, he got the title fight immediately coming off his suspension. And I gotta say, what a what a fight! If you didn't get a chance to see that, watch it. I mean, Khalil proved himself; he proved himself worthy. Uh, he gave Alex Pereira a harder fight than anybody actually thought. People thought he was just a, another uh, easy opposition for Pereira to just knock out, put on a highlight reel, and, and make a big paycheck off. Khalil uh, Roundtree earned a lot of respect that night. He put on a, a hell of a performance. But it did start a conversation about undeserved title shots. And one of the prime examples of that is Colby Covington getting a title shot against Leon Edwards of December of 2023. And I always tell people, this is sports entertainment. I don't care how much people look at these sports as a sport. It's still entertainment. And someone like Bilal Muhammad, who is right now the actual champion of the UFC welterweight division, at the time, he was the guy that everybody thought was up next for a title shot. But people didn't like Bilal because he wasn't the most charismatic personality. That goes to me, of course. Um, and he wasn't a set in the world on fire in terms of media. So Kobe Covington got the nod. And I always told people, Kobe Covington got it because UFC is a business first. It's a business first. Now, they are in the business of giving us the matchups that truly need to happen, but it's still a business. So Kobe, got the, uh, Kobe Covington got the, got the fight because the UFC knew he would help bring in money. He's very outspoken. He's a big personality. He knows how to use the media to promote a fight, and he knows how to, you know, bring awareness to a fight. When you have someone like Leon Edwards, all due respect to him, who rarely does media and rarely goes out of his way to, you know, be brash or entertain a personality, sometimes you need someone like a Kobe to step in because not only is it going to be a, a competitive competition, but it's going to get people hyped for a fight. And that's one of the biggest problems I see with combat sports lately is that there's no hype around certain fights unless you're talking about the Conor McGregor's, the John Jones, the Alex Pereira's, the Deontay Wilder's to a certain extent now, uh, Tyson Fury. Um, you don't see those real uh, more Floyd Mayweather. How can I forget that? And he's not even an active fighter. He still gets more attention than most. Um, and we're seeing people like Jay Paul go out of his way and promote his fights. And that is one of the biggest things I've seen. And I think people need to realize that these is a, these is entertainment. This is entertainment. I'm an actor. What I do is entertainment. And you may think LeBron James is an athlete, but he's still in entertainment. You watch sports for entertainment. So um, Khalil Roundtree got the title fight because the UFC knew that him and Pereira were going to give a banger fight. Banger fight, and it lived up to the expectation. I would say if it wasn't for that fight, UFC 307 probably would have been one of the worst pay-per-views uh, in recent history because of how a lot of the fights went. That fight saved that card. That fight was worth staying up to almost 2 in the morning for Eastern time. Um, And going forward, people need to just realize that this is entertainment. And this actually goes into a narrative I see a lot of fans talk about. Oh, um, you know, for an example, on that card, Mario Batista went against the legend Jose uh, Jose Aldo. And people got mad at Mario Batista for his game plan because he obviously knew that, you know, he was getting tagged on the feet by Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo. And he said, I'm going to start pushing him against the cage and, and using that technique. And people booed him out the arena. And people have also criticized Alex Pereira for not fighting a wrestler. So we're in this weird shift now where fans want stand-up fights. They want fighters to be a Justin Gaethje, a Dustin Poirier, uh, 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 Alex Pereira, stand up, swing and bang like they're Derek Lewis in the middle of the octagon, Max Holloway, who's amazing talent. But people want those type of fights. They want to see those swing and bang. And if you wrestle, you suck, you're boring, you don't deserve um, any any, any opportunities. You, you need to be cut. You need to be sent back to the prelims. All, all this nonsense. And I always say, this is a sport. I've gotten arguments with people about that. Nobody can out troll the troll. Nobody. Nobody. All right. 
And I've gotten arguments on Twitter, uh, X, formerly Twitter, let me say that right, shout out to Elon Musk, um, about this. Because people criticize wrestlers, but again, this is MMA, mixed martial arts. This is not kickboxing. This is not a jujitsu match. This is not the Olympic Games. This is MMA. So when somebody who knows that their specialty is ground moves, wrestling, jujitsu, don't be surprised if they use it to win a fight. Because what athlete, what, what fans fail to realize when it comes to people who only, when they criticize fighters for not standing up and training in the middle of an octagon, you're not fighting just for entertainment. You're fighting to advance your career. Now, someone like Max Holloway, he will go technical in most of his fights until maybe like the last round or the last few minutes of the fight. And then he will open up. Let's stand in this middle. Let's handle this like men. He will do that. And most of the time he wins. But not every athlete is going to do that because they're trying to preserve their record. They're trying to make their way to the top 10, top five, fight for the title. Max Holloway is a former uh, title holder, uh, one of the most highly respected uh, uh, fighters of all time. He has a little more leeway with that because his career is already made. So for someone who's coming up, they are looking at that and saying, is it worth the risk? Probably not. I'm, I, I want to fight for a title. As for someone like Justin Gaethje, who is my favorite outside of John Jones, my favorite athlete of all time. It's not myself. Actually, spoiler alert. I got to give it to John Jones and Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje, in my opinion, I blame him for this. And not in the, this is obviously in a fun way, but I blame him for this because he has spoiled the fans. And fans, you know, Justin Gaethje, just a little background, is a former wrestler. And uh, he competed in college in wrestling, and he did pretty well. But once he's turned into MMA, he doesn't really use his wrestling. He does a lot of leg kicks uh, and punching. And he only really uses his wrestling for defense. But every time he goes in the octagon, he's going to stand in the middle and trade with you. And Justin Gaethje is another one who's been very successful at that. And fans have fallen in love with that. And it's because, I, for me, I feel like social media has ruined people's attention span. They don't want to see an athlete grind out another athlete on the ground with wrestling, pushing them up against the cage, uh, trying to take them down, uh, using techniques that way. We have been spoiled with the knockout, the, the highlight knockout reels on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, um, Facebook. You know, you go on any of these ESPN, MMA, UFC, they don't post the full fight. They post the highlights. And most of the time, the highlights are someone getting knocked out, submitted. And people want to see that real time. But do you think you're going to go into the NBA and not see a LeBron James push his way down in the paint, get a little down and gritty, and make a, you know, a two-point shot? Of course he will. It's the same thing as people saying, oh, I don't want you going in the paint. I just want you to shoot free throws, pull a Stephen Curry. And I think Steph Curry, to an extent, has changed the game in NBA as well. Because now you see everybody. You see someone like Shaq shooting free th uh, three-pointers now. Who's That's not their thing. But because the industry has changed and fans demand something different, now you're seeing these centers and power forwards shooting three-pointers. And it could be a great thing for the sport. I'm not saying it's not a bad thing. But again, we're talking about basketball. Basketball isn't just three-pointers. It's not just you know, shooting free throws. It's about the whole game, the fadeaways, the step backs, uh, you know, all that stuff. So I want fans to, to, to relax a little bit. When you watch a sport, you have to be a fan of the sport. Now, can some exchanges be boring? Absolutely. But you know what? That's their job. That's their game plan. That's how they get their job done. Not everybody's going to be a Justin Gaethje or Habib Nurmagomedov or John Jones or Cain Velasquez, you know, damaging people any opportunity they can. Some people aren't as technical like that, or they may not, that's not their game plan, or they don't have that type of ruthless um, aggression in their fight style. So, you know, I think fans need to pipe down on that. You know, we got to respect the athletes. This one thing I will say. I'm the biggest troll of them all, but one thing I would never do is troll an athlete and disrespect them. Now, I will call out Steph Curry 
for a three-point contest because Steph Curry, I, I, I just think I'm better than you. I, I'll shoot you. I will be so good. I would be the coach of Golden State just to give you pointers. That, that, that's it. That's it. That's the bottom line. Anyway, I digress. But, you know, going forward, I do hope that, you know, going forward for the future of sports, that refs get addressed. Uh, bad judging gets addressed because we can't keep having this. And it's going to get to the point where fighters might start taking things in their own hands, conf uh, uh, confronting these judges because nobody else is going to do it. Imagine going to a job. Your, your, your boss is doing a lackluster job. They're making bad calls. They're putting your safety at risk. And they don't get reprimanded. What job do you know does that? Unless it's obviously certain instances where maybe the, the boss is actually the son of the guy who's supposed to fire him, so he's not going to fire him. But most jobs don't take those type of things uh, lightly. They take action. And then if you complain, they take action. But unfortunately, in a lot of sports, you know, when refs make bad calls and judges make bad decisions, they don't get addressed the same way as an athlete would when they mess up or a media member when they mess up. So going forward, I want that to be changed. And I want fans to just pipe down. Stop with this whole, the, the, these trolling, you know, disrespecting the fighters, uh, calling people out of their name and, you know, using racist, homophobic, uh, religious, you know, hateful speech just because you don't you don't like a fighter's uh, style of play. It is what it is. This flavor's for everybody. It's like Ben and Jerry's, baby. They got 50 flavors. This one out there for everybody. So, you know, sit back, relax, chill, and enjoy the show. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. You know, I'm looking forward to this next episode uh, with this incredible woman. She has made a lot of strides in the entertainment industry, which I'm a part of. And so, you know, that episode will be coming out soon. So I can't wait for that conversation. I got a lot more coming for this podcast as well. I got a lot more guests lined up. It's going to be a banger of a 2025. Uh, it's going to be a lot of improvements, a lot of uh, special guests coming. So stay tuned. Thank you again for tuning in to a, the, another episode of the most charismatic experience and the most electrifying podcast. And I also meant to call out Roman Reigns because I've been getting tagged. People say, hey, you trying to look like Roman Reigns. You trying to look like Roman Reigns. I don't look like nobody but myself. Roman Reigns, you will acknowledge me as your tribal chief. I'm just playing. But you will. You will. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode. I won't keep you too long. I know everybody's trying to go home or do whatever they got to do. So thank you again for tuning in. You know, rate the podcast, leave your comments, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. You know, we're going to be putting all the full episodes on there as well now. Uh, subscribe to YouTube Music. That's another way you can listen to the podcast as well. Stay safe. Uh, you know, stay vigilant. And like I always say, a helping hand is a better hand. Peace. Yeah, 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 yeah.